Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Stephen Mutimba, and I've been taking you through uh, training in uh, climate information service. Um, we've now done three modules, and now we are going to do the fourth module. And the fourth module is in the role of climate information service in development planning and policy making. Um, my name is Stephen Mutimba, and let's start. So module four delves into the role of uh, climate information service for e effective development planning and policy. It discusses practical application of climate information and service in development planning and policy, including sectoral policy and uh, demo domestication of international agreements. So what is development planning? When we talk about development planning, uh, as far as climate information is concerned, is that in the face of increasingly uncertain climate, Achieving medium and long-term development objectives will increasingly depend on climate prediction and the use of climate information. Therefore, what this means is that uh, in every sector, is it, be it in the energy sector, in the agriculture sector, in infrastructure, in water, you need to know how the weather, how climate is going to be in the next 15, 20 years before you start planning. Otherwise, if you plan without, uh, without climate information, your plan may be, may be not um, climate proofed and it will come to naught. So what climate information does is that it can build resilience through informed decision making across social, economic, political and, direct, and ecological dimension. It can guide adaptation planning and investments at various levels and sexual planning for key climate sensitive sectors. Climate smart development planning can reduce the impacts of climate related disasters. And when we talk about climate related disasters, we're talking about flood, uh, drought, very heavy rainfall, uh, heat waves, ETC. So without the climate smart development planning, we can reduce the impacts of uh, climate related disasters such as improve food security, enhance water resource management and build resilience. And there are seven effective characteristics of climate information, which is very essential for decision making. Recall that we had discussed this earlier, but it's important that we reiterate or repeat it here. So when we are talking about climate information, which is important for decision making is that the first thing is that it has to be res responsive to user needs and priorities. That is, it has to have practical application to decision makers, communities, and other stakeholders. And the only way it can be uh, responsive to user needs is that it must have been co-produced. Remember, we talked about co-production. And then the climate information also has to be downscaled to draw effective localized conclusions for plans and policies and to identify uncertainties, opportunities and barriers. By downscaling, we mean that the resolution must be very high, you know, so that it can pick the information of an area. And then it has to be very uh, accurate so as to clearly define risks that, are need, that need to be accommodated. Also, the climate information has to be accessible. That is easy to find, interpret by users, and those are decision makers. And then in terms of duration, that is how long. It must have been collected over a long period of time. As I, when we were defining climate, we defined climate as um, that weather, that in, information that has been collected for about three decades, that's 30 years. So that information, you must have done historical data collection so that you can project the trend, how it will be in future, you know? So it, the duration have been, it has been collected over a long period of time, looking at the historical trends and frequently updated so that you can project the future. 
And then the climate information must be cost effective. Since there are limited resources to manage information systems, then that information must be accessible. That is the, the community that needs it should be able to purchase it, should be able to afford it. And that's why we are talking it must be cost effective. And then it has to be tailored to respond to specific needs of users, risk vulnerable populations, and ecosystem in order to avoid information overload. So those seven characteristics are very, very important when um, disseminating information for decision making. For instance, now when we talk about agriculture development planning, agriculture is one of the most climate sensitive sectors in economies around the world. And in Africa, it's a, a rain fed sector. You know, we depend on the rain. So the quantity of precipitation and climate extremes such as drought and floods affects agriculture, productivity, food security, and economic development. So it's very, very important that in agriculture, we get the right kind of information. So when it comes to the role for climate information and services, it means that we need to be able to predict seasonal climate behavior so that it can help stakeholders to minimize impacts of hazards through planning how to avoid the risk of, or taking precautionary measures, as well as to maximize on the predicted variability such as building water storage tanks to store water for irrigation. You know, and most of Africa is also becoming drier, you know, although there are a few places that have become wetter. So the need to ensure that we have water throughout the period that our crops are on the ground is important. And that's why we need to have uh, these uh, storage water tanks, especially in areas which are arid and semi-arid. In terms of uh, disaster risk reduction, um, we, we, have, we discussed earlier that majority of disasters experienced in Africa are weather or climate driven. For instance, weather parameters such as rainfall and temperature directly correlate with natural disasters such as floods, storms, heat waves leading to vector and waterborne diseases, uh, pest outbreaks, famine, wildfire, and landslides. So the role of climate information and service is that we need to have short-term weather forecasts you know, so that we know what's going to happen in the next, let's say, three weeks or one month. Then we also need seasonal forecasts. Seasonal forecasts are the ones which maybe will uh, forecast a whole season, rain for season, let's say three months, two to three months. And then we also need early warning system, which tells you that there's a storm coming and uh, you need to do something about your crops or about your road so that you can build reliable risk scenarios and in turn strengthen disaster preparedness. So this is something that in the past we've taken for granted and that's why we are suffering. And so there's a need to really strengthen our national hydrometeorological system so that we can get what I called earlier in the first module, now casting. Now casting is whereby you can actually get um, information about in a day, like you can know I'm going to drive from, let's say, Dakar to another town. And while I'm driving, there'll be a storm, there'll be huge rainfall. Therefore you plan accordingly. And then there's now um, the, the forecast, the normal forecast, which forecast, focuses between one to 10 days. And then we have now the scenarios whereby for about a month or two months, you may not be able to focus accurately. So you, 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 you use what you call uh, projections or scenarios. So when it comes to infrastructure and construction, infrastructure and the construction are very vulnerable to weather and climate variability, strong precipitation that is rainfall, wind and temperature extremes can physically damage buildings, bridges, railways, and other forms of infrastructure. So what is the role of climate information services? 
since in infrastructure facilities typically have long lifetimes, you know, you're building a road for a long time. You don't build roads every year. You build them maybe so that they can be there for another 10, 20, even 30 years. So scenario building is a key way of using climate information, climate proof infrastructure. And as we said earlier, scenario building, you can, is, is where you have historical data, let's say for the last 100 years up to the present, and then you use that same information to project what is going to happen in future. So you can project that because climate has been behaving in, in a certain way in the last 100 years, then you can say with certain um, significant uh, uh, that confidence that this this said when you build this road, you need to make sure that you are building very high bridges, very strong bridges, because there's going to be drought, there's going to be floods, etc. So scenario building simply means that you are combining a range of scenarios and historical trend analysis to inform long-term infrastructure planning. And therefore, you need to have a good policy and investment choices in your country so that you know you have enough money to be able to build that road. And you can't do that without climate information. And then we have have uh, domesticating international agreements. We have a lot of uh, international agreements. The most relevant to this work is uh, the United Nations uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change. We also have United Nations uh, Convention on uh, Bi Biological Diversity. We also have United Nations um, Convention to Combat Desertification, ETC. The only way we can make sure that those conventions, international agreements are domesticated is to design national contributions to these international agreements, as well as the implementation also requires that the application of climate information is taken into account. Climate services will have to monitor the efficacy, the efficacy and relevance of this uh, contribution. So climate information provides a scientific basis for international climate agreements. And it also determines global goals for climate change mitigation and adaptation, as well as support for countries. So that is how brief um, module four is. And um, in module four, we have uh, questions for you. Um, there are 20 questions. And as I said earlier, that um, there are reports which you need to have read and um, so that you can be able to answer some of these questions. But the, the, the quizzes also combines previous um, modules that you've already gone through. So the first question in module four is, what are the five main characteristics of uh, climate information service in decision making? What are the main weather parameters modeled in development planning? And then you should recall the difference between representative concentration pathways and shared socioeconomic pathways. What, is it? what are the different? And then describe any three main scenarios under RCP framework. And what do this scenario portend for Africa future development? You know, what are these scenarios saying that Africa would be like as far as development is concerned? And then explain the role of local communities in the right use of uh, climate information. Then how does climate information service assist in development planning? Why does Africa agriculture sector need climate information service? Explain how lack of reliable climate information service has contributed to food insecurity. Then 10, describe the role of climate information service in infrastructure and construction industry. And then 11 is what is the role of climate information service in disaster risk reduction? 
what is the role of climate information in GIS and uh, spatial planning? Then what is the role of global framework for climate service in generating and disseminating uh, climate information service in Africa? Then what is the role of, of Africa Ministerial Conference on Metrology? Explain how advancing technology will influence CIS decision, decision, dissemination and use. How has the use of climate information service contributed to climate change adaptation in your country? Uh, describe instances where lack of climate information has hampered effective progress and planning in the organization. Then 18, explain why sharing of climate information between countries is important in regional development. And then climate information is big data. Explain this concept. And 20, describe the ease in accessing climate information services in the country and how this has contributed to the best of development. So doing this quiz assumes that you have read the reports that accompanies this presentation. So it's very important that you, you read chapter four or module four in the curriculum that uh, the references that we've sent you. So with that, I think uh, I'll stop there. And if you have any question, please send it to my email address, which is uh, stephen.mutimba at eclimateadvisory.com. That brings us to the end of module four.